Olympic Stadium, Montreal, the scene for the final game of the 1981 National League season. The Dodgers and the Expos fighting for a chance to go to the World Series. It's gray and cold and drizzly in Montreal. Temperature around 45 degrees. Hello, everyone. Dick Enberg along with Tom Seaver. It's been our pleasure to call all of the National League playoff series, and we hope you've enjoyed them on NBC, and hopefully we'll get in the fifth and decider today. Now, the 24 hours after the rain delay yesterday, let's go to the pitching, and how does it affect and uh, who does it affect most? Obviously, the two pitchers get an extra day's rest, which they both can use. They'll both be pitching on the fifth day now, but I think if it affects one pitcher more than the other, it's going to affect uh, as a benefit to Fernando Valenzuela. That may be negated, though, Dick, by the fact that this is going to be the coldest day, temperature-wise, that we will have had in this league championship series. Of course, we're interrupting some of the soap opera schedule, usually seen on Mondays on NBC, Days of Our Lives. Well, you talk about the days of our lives. Ray Burris, that man, Fernando Valenzuela, the most important important games of their careers, won a rookie and Burris, a seasoned veteran. They go at it today, pitching for the pennant, and we'll have the starting lineups from Montreal right after we pause for this word. Ready for Game 5, the decider for the 1981 pennant. Rain delay yesterday, and each player spent the time in his own special way, cards or reading or music. For Jay Johnstone of the Dodgers, he used that time for fun and impersonation. Leading off for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Playing second base, one of my favorite base dealers, Davey Lopes. Little short guy with a mustache. Batting second. Playing shortstop, we call him Lloyd, Herculoid, Billy Russell. Batting third, playing left field, Dr. Skull, man of my heart, gives me heartburn when he don't hit, keeps those pizzas coming, Dusty Baker. Hitting fourth, Mr. All-America, my favorite person, the boy next door, the girl you want your daughter to marry. What's his name? Garvey, Steve Garvey. Hitting fifth, that little short penguin, the guy that runs with the funny run, Ron Say. Batting sixth, playing in right field, Mojo. One of my counterparts, Rick Monday. Batting seventh, a hammer on our ball club, Pedro Guerrero. Hits the ball hard, all over. Batting eighth, the boy with the cutest nose. A man after my own heart. His name ends in a vowel like mine. You know, the one with the crooked nose, Mike Sosia. And batting ninth, the guy that we tried to get a Pillsbury Doughboy commercial for, but he couldn't laugh in English, Fernando Valenzuela, our man. And there, of course, managed by myself, Tom Lasorda. Thank you and all sports fans of America. Enjoy the game when it starts. Right down to the waddle. Jay Johnstone with the starting lineup for the Dodgers. Montreal very seriously taking their defensive positions. Ray Burris on the mound. Gary Carter behind the plate. The infield of Larry Parrish at third. Chris Beyer the shortstop. Rodney Scott at second. And Warren Cromartie at first base. Tim Raines in left. Andre Dawson the center fielder. And Jerry White in right. That is not snow falling at Olympic Stadium, but the fans recognizing this is it for the pennant. Of course, they all hope they'll be entertaining the Yankees for World Series Day, dropping leaflets and paper, celebrating the mood of the day. And here's the starter, Ray Burris. He beat Valenzuela 3-0 in Game 2. He said then the biggest win of his life, and now he tries to repeat it today, Tom Seaver. Well, Ray Burris, 6'5", 195, 200 pounds, Dick. It's just a Super Bowl game out in Los Angeles. His numbers this year, probably the best earned run average. He said the best earned run average he has ever had in the big leagues. He's 9 and 7. Lifetime, he's 72 and 83. There's his manager, Jim Fanning. The game that they've been looking for all day. And he's looking for the same kind of game out of Ray Burris that he got out in Los Angeles. The Changed speeds very well, set up his pitches very well. He pitched a pitcher's game out in Los Angeles. He was a, just absolutely super. Now this is the game where you want a man to take the ball. I know this would be the kind of game you'd like to pitch, and you did work the final game of the playoff series against the Reds in 73. I guess you can empathize better than any of us how he must 
Spiel out there about to start the first pitch. You don't stay nervous long, do you? You take that nervousness up to game time. We talked about it last night during the rain delay, and one thing that happens, you're just glad you begin to start the physical activity because that burns off that excess energy that builds up prior to a game. Ready to go for the National League pennant. The Dodgers and the Expos. Danny Lopes leads it off. Ball one. And as we start play, high overhead, Olympic Stadium, it appears the sun is trying to burn its way through the overcast. Temperature in the mid-40s. Lopes, four for 14 in the series. Ball two. Harry Wendelstadt behind the plate. Joe West at first. Paul Breyer at second. Eric Gregg at third. Paul Runge on the left field line. And Dutch Renner down the right side. Two balls and a strike. The crowd, of course, uh, not as large as it was yesterday when they expected over 40,000. Although many seats have been sold, this is a work day. Many folks who had traveled hundreds of miles to be here yesterday had to return home. So we would say in attendance around 25,000. Two balls and a strike. Every pitch meaning so much. Certainly try to keep the ball in the infield. Don't give up the fly ball in the outfield. A sinker down and in and beat it right on the ground to Larry Parrish. Parrish has an exceptionally strong arm, very accurate. Burris so far has done his job. Brings up cleanup man Steve Garvey and that'll take a base hit or some added help for the Dodgers to get a run. They can't do it on and out. Garvey six for 17, including a home run 
that broke the 1 1 tie in Saturday's fourth game and sent the Dodgers on to victory. In the entire National League playoffs this year, only three times have the row team won. The Expos won at Philadelphia in game five, turned their right into the championship series. They won with Burris at Dodger Stadium, and then the Dodgers won here Saturday. Oh, and to the count. All the rest of the time, the home field advantage has been apparent. And Montreal hopes that's the case today. The Dodgers in turn feel that they have the pitching advantage that Burris will not be able to beat Valenzuela too straight. Don't tell that right-hander that's the case. He feels he's on his way to the World Series. Nub foul on the Montreal Expo's message board down in the clubhouse. There were all the information as to what time the buses would leave the stadium and the flights to New York and all the rest of the information. And then on the bottom written in chalk was, be there, or be on it. The Yankees in a delightful position of having four or five days to get all their rotation in order and rested. speedster in left field. He's a key to their success. Has to get on base. Rodney Scott will bat second and play second base. In center field, still no RBIs in the playoffs. Andre Dawson. The catcher hits cleanup. Gary Carter is hit safely in all nine playoff games. Larry Parrish batting fifth and playing third base. Switch hitting right fielder Jerry White, the hero in game three, will bat sixth. At first base, they spark the effervescence of this Montreal team, Warren Crow Marty. Batting eighth, the veteran shortstop, Chris Spire. And on the mound, Ray Burris. Defensively, the Dodgers deploy in this manner. Valenzuela and Socha, the battery, with Say at third, Russell the shortstop, Lopes and Garvey on the right side, Baker in left, Guerrero in center, and Monday is jogging in from right field toward the Dodger dugout. Now, it may be that just in case that sun is about to break through, he doesn't want to be caught without some glasses and lose a pennant because of a ball being lost in the sun. We'll see if that's the case. Yes. There's the sunglass case. That's kind of being optimistic. We bring those out today. <laughs> <laughs> Fernando Valenzuela, 13-7 and seven with a 2.48 earned run average. Not a whole lot you can say about this young man that has not been said already. 192 innings pitched. The statistic I like, 192 innings pitched in the third. 140 hits. 140 hits. 52 less burning. That is really That's exactly bad. right. If you just study and look at that number, that's a, a, just an indication of the number of low hit games that he's had during the course of the season. Switch inning, Tim Raines. Against Valenzuela in game two, Raines had three base hits, two singles and a double, and an RBI. As you saw the correct graphic, he was two for three against Valenzuela and another hit off reliever and even fewer. There's a screwball, one and two. Screwball that he would throw at 
good control. He can get any of his five pitches over at any time. No matter what the count, ahead in the count, behind the count, you throw the screwball. Three and oh, three and two. It makes no difference to him. There it is again. Threw it a little hotter that time. Two and two. The Expos were commenting uh, yesterday that when Valenzuela first came in to play Montreal and beat the Expos, you see the defensive alignment for Reigns. The Montreal players felt they were so concerned about the screwball they forgot he has other good pitches and he really outpitched them. Ball three. But there he felt in turn their success in beating him at Dodger Stadium was to lay off the screwball, make him throw strikes and hit his other pitches. So they did a complete 360. Full count reigns has not really had a chance to use his speed in this series.
play and hits it right up the middle and makes an easy double play from Lopes to wrestle over to Garvey. So both teams with a chance to break it open early. The Dodgers fail to get a man in from third with one out. After Russell had tripled, Baker grounded out and so did Garvey. And the Expos get a double and an extra base runner on the sacrifice fielder's choice, but Dawson hits into a 4-6-3 double play. So two out, no one aboard, 1-0 Montreal, first inning. Gary Carter, the catcher. But again, it points out the importance of getting Reigns over to third base. Technically, it would have been third and one out. He still would have scored on that play. for the final out. So Valenzuela, little trouble, but settles quickly. A run on a double, no one left, one inning complete. It's Montreal one, Los Angeles nothing. We are now moving forward in this program. like eons ago that the Yankees wrapped up their half of the championship series beating Oakland 3-1 and 13-3 at home and then the final game shut out 4-0 out at Oakland. So the Yankees once again in the series. Here in this series, Dodgers 5-1 in game one behind Hooten, then Burris beat Valenzuela 3-0. Then the scene shifted here to Montreal where Montreal on Jerry White's three-run homer won 4-1 in game three and the Dodgers with a late attack, breaking a 1-1 tie in the eighth and winning on Saturday 7-1. one nothing Montreal. Each side with two hits as we go to the fifth inning. And thus far, Burris working on a string of 13 consecutive scoreless innings against the Dodgers. Burris motioning for Tim Raines, the left fielder, to play more into left center field against Monday.
Carlton Fisk syndrome. Those hitters, they swing and you pitchers here. I'm get out of here, get out of here. What are you saying? <laughs> can't tell you. <laughs> you can't tell me a lot, a lot of stuff. stuff. Monday settles for a single to center. And the leadoff man on for the Dodgers. Now Reigns with two hits, or with a hit and a run, and now Monday with a hit. After the fastball that was just foul for a home run, Burris came back with a breaking ball. The infield was over playing Monday to pull. The ball not hit well, but seeing eyes right through the middle of the infield. Guerrero hit into a double play his last trip. plays a little hit and run here in the fifth inning. Proud, again, uh, tough to judge not having done that many games in Olympic Stadium, but they expected over 40, and we would guess 25, 30 range, maybe more. On this Monday, it'll be announced as a larger crowd and that uh, most of the seats were sold. A lot of folks just couldn't uh, take advantage on this Monday afternoon. Fouled away. Interesting strategy by Lasorda. First the hit and run, and then trying to bunt that runner along. Play for a tying run here in the fifth inning. Well, Guerrero, last time up, grounded into the double play. is not swinging the bat well, as you said. Only one hit throughout this league championship series, and Lasorda would like to get his runner at first base, Rick Mundy, down in the scoring position at second. Give Socia a chance to drive in a run. Pedro not swinging the bat well. Tried to get him to chase that breaking ball, which he has done in this series. Two and two. certainly struggling throughout this series so far, but he is so strong. He's the kind of guy that can come out of it on one pitch. No one out. Monday at first base. Out of play. Will it be the first International World Series? Montreal and Canada against the Yankees of the United States, or will it be another in the long line of great series between the Yankees and the Dodgers, who have met ten times in World Series play? And a count now three and two. Well, this is decision making time. Checking his lineup card. And checking the sky, still gray overhead. Three 
you see Fanny motioning there on your screen. He's talking about a slow hit ground ball. If you can't get the double play to Larry Parrish, go ahead and go home. Cut the run off. Sosha hit a long fly ball to right his last time up. Foul back toward us. Bullpen is busy now for Montreal. Stan Bonson, veteran right-hander.
chance of the double play. So Valenzuela, who had seven RBIs during the course of the year, has a very big one today. And the Dodgers have finally scored off Ray Burris after being shut out 3-0 in the first game and through four innings today. And still have the go-ahead run in scoring position, Guerrero, with Dave Lopes, the leadoff man up. He's over two today. second took away the double play and Valenzuela with the ground ball gets in the tying run Moving forward in this program.
show this Thursday night, 8 o'clock. Reigns double to left center on a 3-2 pitch leading off the first inning. Moved to third on a sacrifice by Scott and scored when Dawson hit into a double play. and a fly ball to center. High pop fly. Second baseman Lopes and the right fielder Monday. And Lopes handles it as Valenzuela eases his way through the Montreal lineup again. That's the fourth time he's retired them in order. We're down to three innings, and it's still tied at one. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. The totals after six innings, and this is the final game of the playoffs for the National League pennant. The Montreal Expos, two runs, or one run on just two hits and an error. They've left only one man. And the Dodgers, a run, four hits and no errors, have left four. And left Russell at third after he had tripled with one out in the first inning. Jim Fanning's team really not too many opportunities against Valenzuela. Burris holding him close. Oh, one big decision that Fanning had was whether Burris would hit last inning, leading off that for the Expos. He's thrown 90 pitches so far. But he pitched well the last three outs in the sixth. Three big outs, Baker, Garvey, and Say. Monday, who singled and scored the Dodgers' run in the fifth inning after he just missed hitting a home run leading off the inning. Just foul. High fly to center. Dawson there. Andre puts it away. What a one out here in the seventh inning. It's funny, Dick, how you play an entire season, of course, this season with a strike and all the inequities and whatever, what have you, with that. You play an entire season, you come down here, and it's nine outs. 
He had a win at nine outs. Both teams tied. One to one. Nine outs aside. Every game, every pitch so important. And the managers go through that speech every year in spring training. Every game, every situation. And now all the lessons of the year, all the missed opportunities, as well as all those glorious moments where a man's come through in a pressure situation. And who will be the star today? Pedro Guerrero hits that one deep to left center field. Dawson makes the play. This is a ball that might have been out of Dodger Stadium. Guerrero hits it right on the nose. A breaking ball that was up a little bit, but it gives you a good example of the kind of speed that Andre Dawson has. They talk about him in the same way they talked about a young Willie Mays, a player who could do it all. Hit, run, hit with power, great arm, great coverage. Patrols at center field for Montreal as well as anybody they could want. Well, he got a good break on that ball because he's been playing everyone shallow. And that ball was stunned. Guerrero thought he had at least a base hit, if not a home run, when it left his bat. Two out. Socia. Ball one. Last three outs have been to center fielder Andre Dawson. Socia has not had a hit since his home run in game one. Winnestead just taking time to get somebody in the on-deck circle for the Dodgers. You have to have somebody out there. It's Valenzuela's turn to be in the on-deck circle, but he's maybe changing a sweatshirt. Davey Lopez goes out there as a courtesy to him and stands for him. Fernando trying to stay warm as long as he can before he comes out there. You would think under these situations you wouldn't need to have Lopes out there. Dawson got a chance to make it four in a row. He does. And it'll be Andre Dawson who leads off the bottom of the seventh inning for Montreal. Stretch half of the seventh. They're up to sing in Montreal, and they're looking to cheer in the home half of the seventh. Standing game, tied at one, last of the seventh inning at Montreal. Valenzuela against Andre Dawson, who is 0 for 2 today. No RBIs against Philadelphia and none against Los Angeles.
strike count and came back with a screwball, then a fastball, and then another screwball. Carter way out in front. You know what amazes me, Dick, is the control that he has with that curveball, that screwball. Way out there, right in the corner, right on the knees. Perfect location, perfect movement, perfect speed. Larry Parrish, the batter. Ball one. Valenzuela has not walked a man. Hit it hard the last time up, right at say the third baseman. One and one the count. Talking about not walking a man, he's been two and zero oh on the count for three times. He's been at three balls and two strikes twice, both those times to Reigns.
interesting little scenario. Valenzuela had already come up to home plate, stopped, walked all the way back to the dugout, and then he and Reggie Smith with a little exercise there, perhaps a good luck being wished by the veteran Smith on Valenzuela. I think Valenzuela gave him the hand warmer that maybe Fernando carries in his back pocket to get rid of that. He slide and that thing opens up. <laughs> Give you a hot seat real fast. <laughs> Keep right on going. Yeah. Keep it on the bench over there, not when you're on the bases. Valenzuela, and then the top of the order, Lopes and Russell. Fernando not only has pitched a brilliant three-hitter, he knocked in the only run for the Dodgers with a ground out. Hits that one to right field, and Jerry White there. The Dodgers hitting the ball in the air. That's five consecutive putouts in the Montreal outfield. Four in a row by Dawson before that fly ball. This telecast is presented by authority of Major League Baseball intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of Major League Baseball is prohibited. Woody Fryman, the left-hander. Jeff Reardon, the right-hander. And from now on, one would expect whatever team is in the field, that team's bullpen will be busy. You want to have a pitcher ready almost on an instant notice. Eighth inning, 1-1 one, one tie. Lopes fouled out, grounded out, and safe on an air. will hold at first base. That's the fifth hit off Burris, matching the total by the Dodgers in game two. But they put a man on base at a definite threat to steal. Lopes against Burris. In Dodger Stadium did not get on base. He was 0 for 3. Not only is Lopes a threat to steal here, Dick, certainly, but Bill Russell a good hit and run man. The Dodgers a couple of ways they could go if they want to. They can try the straight steal. They can try the hit and run. The only thing I doubt they would do, they wouldn't bun in this situation. That was one out already. But that's a possibility. Dusty Baker and Steve Garvey follow Russell.
temperature 40 degrees at the last reading and dropping. But these fans, plenty warm, and they represent the entire country of Canada, rooting for their Expos. Crowd of over 30,000, waiting for the official announcement. Fernando Valenzuela of the Los Angeles Dodgers will face Chris Pyre, who made that heady play at short to get Lopes off second base in the top half of the inning. Then the pitcher spot, and Burris is in the on-deck circle, but Steve Rogers is throwing in the Montreal bullpen again. Maybe that if Spire is aboard and they can use Burris in a sacrifice situation, he'll stay in the game. If Spire makes it out, we could see Rogers in the ninth. It's kind of a normal day for Rogers to throw anyway, Dick, and he would normally get almost prepared to go into a game, so he wouldn't be as sharp as he normally would be, but he could pitch. his toughest. One and one. And in the Dodger bullpen, left-hander Steve Howe, right-hander Bob Welch. Two young, hard-throwing Los Angeles relievers. Who just missed. Valenzuela thought he had a strike. So his knees crumple a bit.
Rookie of the Year award. Valenzuela for his outstanding pitching, leading the majors in shutouts and strikeouts. Reigns, the top base dealer in the big leagues with 71 and hitting 304. Continues to mow down the Expos in eight innings, five times. He's retired them one, two, three, and the Dodgers come up in the ninth with the middle of the order in a game tied at one. Steve Rogers, who has been dazzling beyond those season marks in the playoffs, 12 and 8 during the regular year, 3.41 ERA, but three big playoff wins here in the postseason. He beat Steve Carlton twice and thus eliminated the Philadelphia Phillies and he won here on Friday night. Because of the rain, he's had an extra day to rest. He volunteered. He said he thinks he could give Jim Fanning two or three solid innings. And so for the first time this year, Rogers comes in out of the bullpen. It's his game. Ninth inning, tied at one. Fans let him know that they're behind Rogers, starting to chance Steve, Steve, Steve. Pitching Friday night, it's all nine innings. It was seven hits and one run. He struck out five. The most important figure to look at are the 136 pitches that he made. Now, just two and a half days later, checking the book, this is only the third time in his entire major league career he's pitched in relief.
will face Rodney Scott, Andre Dawson, and Gary Carter.
hit the ball hard twice. The last two times up off Valenzuela. Grounded sharply to say, and it was Parrish who doubled into the left field corner his last at bat. You couldn't make it more dramatic, Nick. Three and two pitch to Carter, a guy that can take you out of the ballpark. Lasorda comes out to the mound and pats Valenzuela. Gives him some encouragement. Larry Parrish coming to home plate. Another hitter that can take you out of the ballpark. And he can take you out of the ballpark to right field. He has good power to the opposite field. Jim Fanning playing one of his cards. Will put more speed at first base. Jerry Manuel running for Carter.
first base, Larry Parrish. Welch from Detroit, Michigan, 24 years of age, number one selection of the Dodgers four years ago in the June draft out of Eastern Michigan University. He has fought and won a personal battle. He spent 36 days at an alcoholic treatment center in 1980, recognizing the problem and resolving it. A man with considerable personal courage cast into a role in the ninth inning with a chance to help his team win the pennant or lose. He faces switch hitting Jerry White by bringing in the right-handed pitcher Welch. You turn White around to his less powerful side. And Valenzuela, those numbers speak for themselves. A brilliant game today. And just one pitch away from winning it himself. Championship Series. Let's go down to the Dodgers locker room, and here's Byron Day. Okay. <laughs> Dick Edberg, thank you very much. We're standing here with Rick Bundy, the hero of the ballgame, the hitting hero, certainly, of the ballgame. Rick, my goodness, single. You, you, you brought the first run in for the Dodgers. You almost put it out the seventh, then you rode it all the way out top of the ninth. How does it feel, buddy? It felt a little bit better. You know what's surprising about it? See, I was kidding you before the ballgame. It looks like you <laughs> might not have four hours to fill. The first ball that I hit off Burris, it went foul. I was trying to body English, but it didn't work. Surprisingly enough, the ball that I hit off of Rogers, as soon as I hit the ball, I did not see it until it went over, <laughs> over the fence. Hit it deep. Boy, is that cold. <laughs> it also burns, what, but it feels good. That's right. What did, what did you hit off of Steve Rogers? It was a fastball, and actually, I was a little bit surprised in that situation, that, that, although Steve throws the ball exceptionally well. To get a ball in the strike zone, a three and one count. But he's had a great deal of success, not only against other major league ball players, but certainly against me in the past. And sorry, I'm spitting all over you. <laughs> okay. Let me ask you this: There was some talk. If you, you say that you might want to, might want to hang it up after this year. You had a super season. And what a way to, to to get into the World Series. What do you think, man? Well, as, as you and I were talking earlier, it's a it's a pleasantly difficult situation. And I think today just made it that much more difficult. We'll have to wait till after the World Series is over. Very thankfully, we are there. And it, oh, it was not an easy road. We don't know how to do things easily. Well, listen, very quickly. Now, 
You're going to be facing the Yankees have announced your rotation. First two ball games, Gidry and John. Do you have any thoughts about that? The only thing is we're going to be there. I know that. Okay. This is a particular point. Thank you, Rick, very much. The Dodgers are National League champions after we pause for these words from your local station.